Shalom is from Mosai and Christ Bless, Officer Yawanathan here. All right, uh, this is our last day here in Uganda. We've been here for a few weeks now, a couple weeks, I'm sorry, now. Um, we've been doing a lot of work here, a lot of work against the falsehood, colonialism. What I want you guys to do is pay close attention to the videos coming soon. It's the second interview that Lighthouse TV or LTV here in Uganda hosted uh, for us at IUIC, where they, they hosted Bishop Nathaniel, Captain Isaac, all right, and it was a good interview. It was a really good interview. The pretext to that interview was actually confrontation. All right, the Christians, all right, or the represent representatives of the Christians called the network and confronted the network program director, Jimmy. We have a good relationship with him for now. Uh, Lord's will that continues. All right, we know the heat is gonna turn up on Jimmy. We pray he endures and, and we can maintain a, a good relationship with him. All right, so what happened is they called Jimmy. Christians called Jimmy. And they were angry, they were upset with Jimmy, and they questioned him and confronted him about him posting the video of the interview that we had with him, and not only that, but having it live, all right? They said our doctrine was wrong. So Jimmy said, well, I welcome you then to come and challenge Israel United in Christ on my show. They said, yeah, they sent someone, they sent the representative, and just watched the interview. Shalom. My name is Esther Menendra, and uh you know, a couple of days before, I've been reading a book, it's called The Art of War by Sanzo, and he says, you know, this, the greatest things of tomorrow must be started today, and uh, you must be able to prepare for battle in advance when you are envisioning any sort of conflict. This is a pretty good book that really teaches uh, things to do with strategies and all that. But I would like to welcome you to this edition of The Spotlight, where I am having very, very, very incredible guests that I met actually last week and they they really tingled my mind a bit. Have you ever wondered that we blacks are Jews? It, these are things we are going to be unveiling this very time on the spotlight and in the studio I am glad to have Bishop Nathaniel. You're welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yes and I'm having Captain Isaac just as you can see very contemplative. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ready for battle, I think I would say, because he's a captain. And um, gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you once again at Lighthouse Television. Thank you. And this very day we are unveiling Israel united in Christ. You have, I'll begin with you, Bishop Nathaniel. Um, you have the, the message that IEUC is giving us is that bit of reminding uh, Personally, I'm a Pan-Africanist, mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I really believe in your sentiments. And where is this uh, passion for us blacks coming from, from the IUC? Uh, it's coming from the Bible, actually. Oh, okay. um, remember what Christ said, get that Captain Isaac in Matthew 15, verse 24. We often uh, reference it, I hear many churches reference it, but they don't truly understand what he means, what Christ meant. Read that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Christ came for the diaspora, the lost sheep, because remember the Israelites, what happened? They kept going into captivity. They went from the Assyrian captivity, Babylon, uh, Persia, Media, Greek, and then when Christ was on the scene, Rome was dominating them. They were paying taxes to Rome. So Israel was scattered in slavery. We are the people scattered from captivities, but nobody truly cares about us to reorganize and strategize and unite us together as a people, except Christ. He is our commander, our king, our Lord, and we are following in his footsteps. Well, um, you, you see, uh, Bishop, uh, the, the, the thing you're on the gospel move here at Lighthouse Television, you know, you tingled my mind a bit with all the, you know, the information, the biblical evidence and all that. So. As a Christian journalist, I went back and I'm like, you know what, let me try and see. And, and you know, the, the issues that IUC raises, they raise a lot of theological debate. Mm -hmm. And and uh, these are some of the scriptures that I really, as a bishop, maybe you would enlighten us about. Okay. John 3.3, 3, uh, John 3.16, John 1.12, John 1.17, and Romans 8. I, th this, I mean, because you say Jesus is for the blacks, and yet John 3.16 says, uh, whosoever believes in him shall not, whosoever, meaning whether white or black. Mm. I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm just trying to see okay. what, what, what do those 
what does that is isn't that a universal encompassing bit? If Christ is for us blacks, then what about the ones? Oh, okay. So yeah. remember the scripture we just read when yeah. Christ said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What we're taught in theology school, it will read that and ignore it and think Christ made a mistake by the time you get to John 3.16. Okay. You read that and go, so maybe Christ, the Son of God, was ignorant to what he meant. No, 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 no. We've been miseducated because Christ didn't, his doctrine never changed. It stayed the same about the lost sheep of Israel. Watch this. Most people can quote John 3.16, correct? Yeah. No one can quote John 3.14. Can you? No. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. read John 3.14. Watch that. I'm gonna, we're going to explain John 3.16 right yeah. now. Okay. This is the book of John, chapter 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So, as remember, Christ is speaking to Nicodemus, correct? Yeah. Nicodemus, he was a Jew, a ruler of the Jews. So it's two Jews, two Israelites talking. Okay. So Christ, before you get to verse 16, he says the same way Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must I be lifted up. Yeah. Do you know the history on that, yeah. that he referenced? No. No. Okay, yeah. Uh, the, the, the context was uh, the serpent in the wilderness, the one they called Nehushtan, and he, the snake, that whoever would look, then the Israelites wouldn't be poisoned with the, with, with the venom of the snake. Very good. Yeah. Very good. So in, the, in Numbers 21, verse 6 through 9, and that's what he's referencing. Let's read it real quick. Numbers 21, 6 through 9. Quick. Numbers chapter 21, verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. So the Israelites were dying. Go ahead. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, it shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he, be, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Okay, so the, the serpent of brass was held up to who? The children of Israel, right? True, yeah. It was not held up to the Egyptians. It was not held up to the Moabites or the Philistines. It was only held up to the children of Israel. Okay. So when we go back to John 3.14 and keeping it in this cultural context, yeah. he's saying, read it again, John 3.14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted so up. So Christ is saying the same way Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to the children of Israel, I must be lifted up to the children of Israel. Well, go ahead. Well. Verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So that whosoever, when we go back to Numbers 21, remember he said, everyone that looks upon it shall live. Meaning all the Israelites didn't look upon it. Some did, some didn't. So it's saying the same context, go ahead. For God so loved the world. Now, you see that word world? I said, yeah, watch this. Exactly, yeah. The word world, that's what's throwing everybody off. Yeah. Because we don't examine the meanings of words. For example, Uganda is a third world country, correct? Yeah. America is called what? A free, the free world. Yeah. There's different types of worlds. You have the animal world, sports world, different. So watch this, Isaiah 45, 17. I'm going to show you the word world in use in the Bible. I'm going to show you two references. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. Verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So Isaiah says the Israelites are the world without end. Now let's see what Christ used. Did he use the word world? Yes, he did. John 18 verse 20. Yeah. Watch this. We're explaining the word world. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. In its cultural context. <laughs> Go ahead. John 18 verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort. So the world he spoke openly to was the world of the Jews. He was not going to Afghanistan. He was not going to uh, China. He spoke with the uh, Jews Bishop, always resort. What about John 1.12? Okay, let's look at John 1.12. Get that. So wait, so, so far, 
the world in this context is the world of the Israelites. Now, the, the, the word, we didn't deal with whosoever yet. Can I deal with that word? Yes. Get that Acts 2.21, because that's because, another word. Because whosoever, in, mm -hmm. I mean, in, in plain English, yes. it's, it's every, whosoever. whosoever, I mean, right. It's, okay. it's, 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 it seems to be universal. It seems. Yeah. Watch this. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. You see that? Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So we'll read that and go, no, no, it can't be. It must mean every... Mm -mm. Remember, the Bible was written by what people? The Israelites. Like if, if, if your father writes a letter, he's like a will for you, for your family. I want this to go to that one, this go to this son, this goes to you, this goes to her. Let's say you lost the letter. And I find it. And I go, oh. He's going to give me a TV and a house. Was the letter written to me or to you? The it will. It was written to me. Exactly. Yeah. So is the Bible. The Bible was written to the Israelites. Written by the Israelites for the Israelites. But then, then how comes behind the... Okay, if you look at the original texts mm. of, 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 of the Bible, okay. one is in Hebrew and that is the Old Testament, mm -hmm. and then the New Testament is in Greek. Oh, very good. Watch this. Here's the missing history. Give me, uh, give me Maccabees. Maccabees. Now I'm going to help you with something. Y'all may not be aware of this. The book of Malachi ends with the Persian captivity. Yeah. The book of Matthew starts off with the Roman, Roman captivity. captivity yeah. Where is the Greek history written at? You ever wonder that? The Greeks preceded Rome. Where is the history in the Bible about the Greeks? Then that is where I am asking. Then mm. how comes that the, the, there is a lot of Greek translation? Because most of the words, for instance, uh, this is uh, this is a question I wanted to ask in the next. In the, 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 but the, the, there are words that really have the English meaning and the Greek context right. are quite different. Or one seems to be complementary to mm -hmm. the other. So how comes we have the New Testament, which we believe as as a Christian, mm -hmm. I, I, because you're Israelites, yes. <laughs> we are Israelites, mm -hmm. I mean, but as Christians believe that you know the the New Testament. I mean, it's for them, and that is where Christianity now best is from. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Watch this, watch this. Uh, so you had, there's two things. You asked about uh, the Greek translation, and you yeah. also asked about, uh, just now, about the New Covenant, the yeah, New Testament. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, give me Hebrews 8. This is going to clear up for a lot of Christians. Who is the New Covenant for? Like you said, Christians say it's for everyone. Yeah. Let's see what the Bible says regarding the New Covenant, which is the New Testament. Yeah, and we'll 8. go back to John 1, 12. Yes, we'll go back. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 8, and let's start at verse 8. Hebrews Watch chapter this. 8 and verse 8. Hebrews 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So the new covenant is only for the Israelites. It's not for everybody on the planet Earth. This is the mistake that, that the colonizer forced on us. The Bible says the new covenant is for the children of Israel. <laughs> now that brings me back to John 1, 12. Yes, let's go to John 1, John 12. 1, 12. Yeah, John let's 1, go 12. there. I love this. All praises to the Most High. Amen. <laughs> John chapter 1 and verse 12. 12. Yeah. But as many as received him... To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Mm, yes. So you read that and think it means everybody on the planet. Yeah, I mean, me. Mm -hmm. Remember, the same thing we read in about Moses. Yeah. Remember, the, the Israelites were in the wilderness being rebellious. He said, make a serpent of brass and everyone that looks shall be healed. But all Israel did not look. Some died. Many Israelites died. So now Christ has come on the scene. Okay, and Israel was doing it when he came. They were still being rebellious. So now Christ is saying here, the Lord is saying regarding Christ. So read that again. 
But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Right. This is still in its context for the Israelites. It's not talking about Moab and the Philistines and the Edomites. It's still regarding the children of Israel because we're rebellious people. We all don't believe in the word of God. <laughs> well, then um, John 1 17 says, uh, for the law, and this I think takes me to the next, okay. the next question. Uh, for the law uh, came through, you can read it, I read think, it. yeah. John, it? The John law came Moses. through, yeah, through Moses, mm -hmm. but grace and yes. truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, uh, last time we talked about keeping the Sabbath, which mm -hmm. of which we shall discuss, and, yes. you know, because keeping the Sabbath, and, and yet I came to find out that there are 37 scriptures in the Bible that, you know, say Christians are not under the law. Oh, okay. We're going to deal with all of them. <laughs> we can do with all of them. Read John 117. John 1 verse 17. Mm -hmm. John 1 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. But grace and truth. So that seems like Christ came with something contrary. Yes. But no. See, when you read the Bible, you must read it precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. God teaches us in Isaiah 28 how to read the Bible. So now let's understand grace. Let's go to Titus chapter 2. I want to understand grace. Yes. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, right? Yes. What is grace? I you, I owe you a thousand dollars. I'm just giving a, a, an example, an analogy. I owe you a thousand dollars. And I said, brother, I can't pay it tomorrow. I can't even pay it today. Can you give me grace? And you say, okay, Bishop, I'll give you a grace period. Actually. A grace period. Does that mean I'm absolved of paying you? No. I still have to pay you, right? Yes, yes. So we've broken all the laws of God. Christ comes. I'm giving you grace. And do you know what Christians do? That means I don't have to keep the commandments. <laughs> no, that's not what that means. Then, then what does Hebrews 8.13 say? I'm going to explain that, but yeah. let's explain grace. Okay. To show that I gave you the proper understanding. Come All on. Right. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So in order for me yeah. to live righteously, godly, in this present world, where can I go? Because say I'm in love and infatuated with you. And you say, no, that's not right. You're not supposed to be in love with me. Yeah. You have to be in love with a woman. And I say, why? Why? Where would you take me in the Bible to say you must live righteously? And I'm confused. I might like a dog. Let's say I'm in love with a dog or an animal. You, a dog or an animal. Where would you go in the Bible to get me right, to get my mind right, in terms of living righteously and godly. Where would you go? I guess it's that thing. To show you that my lust is wrong. If I'm in, in love with an animal, or you, or give me another example. Obviously, it would, it would take me back to the Ten Commandments. Oh, but, right. But, but that is right. That is See, <laughs> wait, wait, don't, don't run past that. Yeah. You must take me to God's law to say, no, no, no. God's law says, if you lay down with another man, that's an abomination. And I'll go, oh, okay, I didn't know that. And for my love for an animal, you'll say, no, 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 you can't be in love with an animal. God says in Leviticus 18, if you lay down with an animal, you shall surely be put to death. You can't do that either. You're clearing me up to live righteously, soberly, and godly. That's how you get me on the right path. That's what grace does. Grace teaches you to keep the commandments. That's what grace does. Now, actually, I, this is the understanding of, I mean, that, that personally I have grace. It is that undeserved, unmerited favor of God because as naturally as as a human being you cannot keep the law because the law is not only the Ten Commandments, it's a whole set of six hundred and so you mean laws. you cannot keep the commandments. You, <laughs> you, you, to keep them mm -hmm. it is the grace that gives you the power. Okay, I'm gonna show you what you just did. Yeah. Isaac go right back to Titus two and eleven. I'm gonna show you what you just did. Yeah. Read that again. Titus 2 and 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So what you just did, you heard that, you read it with us, and then you said, no, 
personally, grace, you created your own definition now, contrary to what the Bible says. That's what you just did. That's what theology school has taught Christians to do. Ignore Bible. Forget about that. That's what they have taught us to do. I mean, I, I mean then, then what does... Why I brought that context? I brought it from the Hebrews because all these, the, the, the scriptures that really say that Christians are not under the law. Give me one. Give me one. Acts 15.10, Romans 3.20. Give me Romans 3.20. Let me hear that one. Yeah. Romans 3.20. Let's hear that. That the law reveals sin, but it cannot fix it. Mm. Let's read that. Romans 3.20. Let me hear it. This is the book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Mm. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Yeah. Now read the next verse, please. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Jump down to the last verse. Last verse, verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? Do we then do away with God's laws? God forbid. That means no. Yea, we establish the law. Yea, we must establish the law to the law. <laughs> so what I'm showing you, as Christians, you've been miseducated regarding the Bible. They've perverted the words of God to make us an immoral people, a decadent people. That's what they've done to us. And then we want God to bless us. He's not going to bless us like that. We, and he's not going to deliver us from oppression until we come back to his commandments in Christ. Mm. Well, well uh, then we, if, 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 that is, if that is the case, then what was the ministry of the cross for? Uh, the ministry of the cross, give me that. In Isaiah 58, I'm going to show you the prophecy. Isaiah 58, I believe is verse 10. It might be verse 12. Just look at it. Isaiah 53, I apologize. Isaiah. 53, 53, where it says uh, his soul was an offering to yes, sin. That one might be verse 10 through 12, somewhere right there. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 10. It says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Verse 11. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. See, Christ bared our iniquities. Was that the end of that? Um, no, that's verse 12. Mm -hmm. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressions. So Christ made intercession. Now Isaiah was talking about the Israelites, what Christ would do for us. Now, in the New Testament, it says the same thing. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 30, 31. 31. Yeah. yeah, let's look at that. Because, and it, it shows you another, it shows you the proper understanding of John 3, 16 as well. Acts 5, mm -hmm. verse 30, 31, I think it is. Yes. Acts, Acts chapter 5, and verse 29. Well, let's get to the point. Verse 31. It says, Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. See that? That's what Christ did on the cross. Give Israel repentance. So that shows that John 3.16, Christendom has been teaching the wrong understanding again. Oh, uh, well, for those that have just joined in and you're watching Lighthouse Television, uh, we are here unveiling Israel united in Christ, and we are raising theological questions. And, you know, for us to really get a proper understanding, you know, a proper understanding of what we should stand for, mm. for people in Christ centered on Yes. And, uh, this, and we are discussing and unveiling Israel united in Christ. It is a spotlight with me, Heston Munana, and we are we're going to continue. Uh, Bishop, you are still explaining uh, before, I think I'll, I'll, I'll touch the race issue in the next segment. Okay. Let's just first understand this, uh, the, the theological questions that raise from what um, we are here, and uh, I was reading Hebrews 8.13. It's, it explains the law as being obsolete, mm. growing old, and ready to vanish. Mm. Okay. Let's yes. read that. 
Hebrews 8, 8 that day. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13. Can you start above it? Yes, sir. Verse 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Wait a minute. Yeah. 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 Wait a minute. Yeah. That was what verse is that, Captain Isaac? That was verse 11 and 12. Oh, see, start at 10 and go down. So let's keep it in context what he's talking about. Start at 10. Verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of of Israel. Oh, so now we know who he's talking about. Israelites. Go ahead. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people, mm. and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So from the least to the greatest Israelite, they, we shall all know him. Go ahead. Okay. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. God's going to be merciful to the Israelites' unrighteousness. Go ahead. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Oh, thank the Lord for that. Go ahead. Verse 13. <laughs> In that he saith a new covenant. He hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So the old covenant of animal sacrifice was ready to vanish away because Christ was the new covenant. <laughs> For who? The children of Israel. Us! <laughs> Oh, wow. Thank you for that scripture. Thank you. All praises <laughs> to the Lord. Now that it's it, it, all this, I did all this out of curiosity, and mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and you know, and again, my purpose of this was to learn more. Okay. And and because with with every there is a lot of weight of doctrine. Yes. And so so most of the times you you really get and, and you're like you need to get what is truth and mm -hmm. what is a half truth and what is a total lie. Yes. The so, white Jesus is a total lie. Total lie. White Jesus is total lie. What? I didn't get that. The white image of Jesus is a total lie. It's not in the Bible. That, that is actually the context. That, you know, it's, it's a question I didn't want to ask in this segment. Oh, you want to deal with it in the next segment? In the segment, because the issue of um, race, I've, I've, I've read articles that are really condemning you and calling you cults and, you know. <laughs> and, 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 you know they call cult Christ and I'm a cult. It's as a, they persecuted them. So, and, and I was trying to be objective. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was like, okay. You know, as as a Christian journalist, the, in, in my profession, the, the, we are taught to be impartial and yes. very balanced. Mm. So I'm like, okay, fine. But then, what do they have to say? Do they have biblical evidence and fact? Mm. And that is what uh, uh, me. That is what informs making my case. Yes. So I, I, that is why I went through scripture and brought this so that you really explain what they mean. And I'm Let's actually, get some more. <laughs> you got a whole list here. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I mean, we can have uh, Romans, um, Romans 4.15 and Galatians 2.16. The law justifies nobody. Uh -huh. Okay, let's get that. It does, uh, Galatians 2.16 says uh, the law can justify. Keeping the woman can justify anyone. So you want us to go where? Uh, Galatians 2.16. Okay. This is the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So now the understanding is what does Paul mean by the works of the law? All right. I know we, we've got one minute and uh, maybe in just a few seconds, just wait. Yes. Yes. Paul's yes. talking yes. about animal sacrifice. Okay. That's what he's talking about. Wow. <laughs> See how quick I answered that real quick. Bam! Yeah. I got scriptures too. I'll show the, you. I mean, because people think the works of the law are the deeds of what um, the Ten Commandments say. And, you know, if that you doing right does not justify you, you're justified by faith, not what you do. Hmm? I mean, because... Remember, watch this. Remember what Paul said in Romans 3. He says, do we make the law void through faith? Faith to yeah. grace, he said, God forbid. Yeah, we established the law. Okay. We must keep it. Okay, yeah, we, we, we will take a quick commercial break at this moment. I remember you're watching the spotlight. We'll be right 
back after this state union. I feel blessed, got good people in my life. But still I pay love, even though sometimes we fight. Sometimes, sometimes. But me not here, job. No, no, no. Me not here, job. No, no. But me not here, job. Oh, no, no. Me not here, job. No, no way. Never could have just seen a boy. If you can't go to the ticket, then you don't qualify. Then I qualify. Never drop your guard around the boy. Only do that with the people, then what you know, bonify my youth. Watch them, the one time you deny them when them act to something new, I know them friend. Bad breed, them a problem. Yeah. Back off each other, snare circle and stay far from them. Smart crew, nah, me no need enough. Nah, I show friends deal with you when it's time rough. A real friend, no turn them back. I always keep it real, they no put on a hack. No hack, all you fit turn your back on your people. Uh, why some people so evil? Watch for the snake, don't make them deceive you. Oh, rain no fire for you. I feel blessed, got good people in my but still I pay love, even though sometimes we fight. Sometimes, sometimes. But me not here, just no, no, no. Me not here, just no, no. But me not here, just oh, no, no. Me not here, just no, no way. Me not here, just me remember the struggle when me have a water coming on me eye. Nothing can fix us. Me brother Malaka used to cook me banana and oil. Depression of a brain equals. We face the tribulation every day. Blessing it a rain for me. Militant soldier in the army. And he bless me with the laws and the testimony. So I'm going to hold the faith and give praise. I feel glory. blessed. Got good people in my life. But still I pay love. Even though sometimes we fly. Sometimes, sometimes. But me not here, just no, no, no. Me not here, just no. Anywhere we go, we not change, cause we never grow so. Look at the junk crop, them a change like lizard, like them never know you. No, for them, my friend, for you, no Cajun. Them against the truth, them turn pagan. Them a cockroach, John, for the bacon. Betray, man, them a roll with Satan. Please, me, I beg your judge, I watch you over me. Protect my soul from my enemies. Them want to see me, then them want to see the best of me. Them want me six foot deep, down in the cemetery. Please, me, I beg your judge, I watch you over me. Protect my soul from my enemies. Them want to see me, then them want to see the best of me. Them want me six foot deep, down in the cemetery. I feel blessed, got good people in my life. But still, I pay love, even though sometimes we fly. Sometimes, sometimes. But me, not here, just now. And welcome back from that quick ad break. Uh, lovely people that are watching the only Christian television that has lasted for the last 25 years here in Uganda and you're watching Lighthouse Television. This is a beautiful show. Spotlight with me, Heston Munanura. And uh, for those, you can follow Lighthouse on YouTube, uh, then at Lighthouse Television on Twitter, Lighthouse Television, Facebook, and on Instagram, we are there just to bring the true gospel of Jesus Christ to you. And right now, I'm seated with the people who are custodians of the truth. <laughs> Yet, uh, it's something that has run. We are having, by the way, we are having uh, people from uh, Israel, Israel united in Christ, telling us, rem reminding us that we blacks, we are Jews. I'm actually loving every minute of this. So, and uh, I, I'm having Bishop Nathaniel, and who is the founder? Yes. Yeah, of IEC, and uh, Captain Isaac. I, 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 I really, I, I really, I, I really looked through your 
you know, the chain of command. It's really a chain of command. Captain of a thousand, captain. You know, like, yeah, and, and then I was like, oh, right, okay, now this is cool. <laughs> uh, um, Bishop, and this is something that has, he, one time Jesus was before Pilate, and um, Jesus mentioned something and said, I am telling you the truth. And Pilate asked him, what is the truth? And IUC says, it has the truth. And yet Jesus says, he is the truth. He is the way, the truth, the life. Mm -hmm. So... In that context, would you explain? Because if the truth is Jesus, then to those that are saying they've confessed Christ and have believed in him, yes. think they have believed the truth. Mm -hmm. So what is the truth? The truth is the word of God. But that's still kind of vague, so I'll be more specific. Yeah. The truth is God's law. That's his truth. Read that for us. Psalms 119 verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. See that? Thy law is the truth. When Christ came, uh, Heston, he came teaching and establishing God's law. That's what uh, the world has omitted from the Holy Bible. That Christ came teaching the law, living the law. That's what he did. That's what he taught. Matthew 5, for example, the Beatitudes. The whole thing's about keeping God's law. The entire chapter. <laughs> but then you say the word of God and yes. yet John 1 says that in the beginning was the word the word was God the word was God and the word became flesh yes. and in symbolically it's talking about Christ because there's a verse also in the Bible that I came across that says three bear, bear witness in heaven that mm. is God the Father God the word the word and then the spirit and because Christ Manifest the word manifested itself in the flesh. Mm. So, if uh, there's a preacher who told me, and of which I really, uh, really kind of subscribe to this, he says, Scriptures are not the word of God, but they point to the word of God, who's Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Look, give me Isaiah 42 21. Here's a prophecy about Christ. Here's a, this is what this is going to explain what I said earlier uh, when we read that yeah, yeah. Uh, thy law is truth. Yeah. Watch what it says about Christ. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 21. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. That's what Christ came and did. He magnified the law and made it honorable. I'll give you an example. In Matthew 5, he says, it's been written, thou shalt uh, not kill, right? He says, but I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother. You know what that is, Matthew 5? Yeah. It's around verse? Verse 22. Yeah, get that. Um, verse 21. Right. Matthew 5, verse 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. So Christ is explaining the law, Thou shalt not kill. Because you and I would naturally say, We've never broken that law, we've never killed. Christ is explaining, the breaking of that law begins here with anger. When you're angry with your brother for no reason, that's no. Good. Even I think even with a reason, huh? I think even with a reason. No, 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 no. no there's a reason. I mean, I mean, no. I mean, <laughs> even if you're angry with a brother for a reason, you committed a sin. I give no, no, no. Remember, Scripture says, "Be angry, but sin not." You can be mad with somebody, but not sin. But here, what Christ is saying: when you're angry with a brother, your brother, without a cause, he's done nothing to you, but you, you just hate me. You dislike me. I've done nothing to you. It begins there with the thought. Then it begins, you begin to act out on it. That's what Christ is explaining to us with name calling. For example, he says, you call your brother, thou fool. Mm -hmm. He says, then you say, raka, mm -hmm. meaning you like to insult you. I'm insulting you. You've never done nothing to me, but I'm insulting you over and over and over. And it will eventually begin, it will lead me down that path to hatred against you and I'll lay hands on you. That's what he's saying. Uh, he, he, that's him magnifying the law and making it honorable. And I, I mean, again, I think continue to say, if you just look at this beautiful babe and, you know, you just, you know, just get popped in the mind and like, you've also like committed sin before even you... Yes, what well, adultery. Yeah. Right, when you look at a woman to lust, he's, where's that? Verse, verse 27. Read that. Matthew 5, verse 27. 
It says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, That whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, Hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So that's him magnifying the law and making it honorable. Because we would naturally, I've never committed adultery, I've never slept with my neighbor's wife. But Christ says, if you look at a woman to lust after her, sexually desiring her, you've already broken that law. So he, made, he magnified the law to another level so we could all be clear. And that it, we're all guilty by that. So, oh, shoot. I didn't know that. I thought I was good. I'm guilty. Just in my thoughts, in my mind. Wow. Wow. Let, 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 me, let me drive the gear of the discussion and, you know, talk about... Uh, now getting back to the you know the racial beat, I, I don't know how to call it, but the, then the, the black the black Jews, you explained that on the gospel move, and you know I was, and I asked you actually, but by the way, I'm the one who asked the question, mm. who are those those that parade themselves as Jews, but here, the notion of Jesus being black or the reality of us uh, being Jews brings in the issue of color and race, and yet Second Corinthians five sixteen. Mm. 17, 18, 19 says, we know no man after the flesh. And when you talk about color, you're talking about the flesh. So then explain that. What does that mean? Can you read that over us? Yes. Start at 15. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. And that, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. So this is saying, this is a hard thing to understand for a lot of people. It says, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Uh, meaning that in the midst of their great words, their sins and all that, we're not supposed to follow man. We're supposed to follow Christ and what he says. Because why? He's the fulfillment of the word of God. Read that again. Verse 16. You want me to read down to 17, Bishop? Yeah, read on. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, in Christ yeah. he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Meaning what? Your old sins. The, the, when you lived in the flesh, all of that is passed away. Go ahead. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You're a new creature. That's being born again. That's what it's saying. That's what Paul is saying. But then he Not says, to know no man after the he flesh. Says, he says, if any man... And that word, any. There you go again. There you go again with <laughs> the me. any. Yeah. I, again, I'm gonna tell you, the Bible, watch this, Psalms 147. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to give you two verses, one Old Testament, the, one New. The only thing maybe I'm realizing is that maybe the context is that I'm getting out the context that this was for Israel. Yes. Oh, that's what it is. Watch this. Yeah. Now, you had many, during the time of Christ, you had many... Uh, Groups, sex with the Pharisees, the scribes, the, the, uh, the Sadducees, you had the Herodians, you had the Antiochians, the, the Stoics. Right, there were yeah. many groups. Watch this. Psalms 147 verse. So what I'm proving now is the Bible's only for the Israelites. I need to clear that up. Watch this. Psalms 147 verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. See that? So that's what David said in the spirit of Christ. Now watch what Paul says in the spirit of Christ in Romans 3. I'm going to show he's saying the same thing. <laughs> watch this. <laughs> Romans 3 verse 1 and 2. Romans 3 verse 1 and 2. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly, mainly, because that unto them, unto the Jews, the Israelites, were committed the oracles of God. The Bible was only committed to the Israelites. It was not committed to the Moabites, the Philistines, the Canaanites. It was not. This is our book. So when you read any and things of that nature or whosoever, it's still referring to the same people. Watch the next verse. Verse 3, for what if some did not believe? So, some of who? Some of you Israelites don't believe. You want to follow democracy. You want to follow these various the theological... Uh, oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> some don't <laughs> believe. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> but what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. You see that? So when it talks about any or whosoever, it's talking about the Israelites... Why? Because some of us believe, some of us do not. 
<laughs> so it's going to be that way. Wow, wow. And now, bringing in the black beat, I, I really, really need to really understand. Mm -hmm. uh, how in the heaven or hell are black Jews? Oh, very good. <laughs> hey, that's a good one right there. Yeah. Because it's been taught that we are not. Yeah, we had this. Actually, um, I think I read a book by John Speak, and you know, the, he was one of the explorers, uh, white explorers, mm -hmm. who really came and actually they say he discovered the Nile, the source of the river Nile, yet there were people. Right. <laughs> I mean, okay. Uh, which, <laughs> but then he, uh, in, in one of the articles, he was referring to Henry, Henry Malton's time, he said that Africans, the blacks, are descendants of Ham. And when you follow the story of Noah, shame, how, uh, shame, Japheth, and Ham, uh, there is that, there is that innuendo that Ham did to Noah, and he was cast. So, all blacks stem from Ham, and then the Caucasians and the whites are shamed. Then we have the Asians in Japheth, I think. And I mean, there is that school of thought. Then when you come and then tell me that I am a Jew, mm -hmm. it's revolutionary. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, everybody on the planet was black from the time of Adam. When you read Genesis 2, verse 7. Can we read that please, sir? Then I'm going to show you that we're Jews, the real Jews. Real quick. I can show you. In one verse, I'll show you. Genesis 2, 7. This is, this is the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The dust of the ground is the soil of the earth. It's brown. So that proves what? Adam was a black man. Now let's get to the Jews. Jeremiah 14, verse 2. And again, we're reading from the King James Version Bible. Everybody in the Bible, all the Israelites were black. The color differenti differentiation came in Genesis 25 with Esau. That's where the color change came in. Okay. Watch Jeremiah 14, 2. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Read slow. Judah morning. So the word Judah, that's where the word Jew comes from. Jew is short for Judah. It's an abbreviation. Okay. Go ahead. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. Just like Adam was made from the ground, the Jews are black like the ground. The Bible's telling you, plain and simple, what we look like. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Bishop, uh, yes. let's, let's go back to Genesis 1 mm -hmm. and Genesis 2. Okay. Because uh, I am, I'm, I'm tempted to believe that the creation story in Genesis 1 happened in a spiritual realm and God got, because in Genesis 1 when he's created, he says, let us make man in our own image mm -hmm. and likeness. So he created them male and female. Then Genesis 2, he brings what he created because he breathed life into Adam and he became a living soul. So that's that he created. I believe what he created in Genesis one, he just made happen in Genesis two. There were I, I don't think they were the same and simultaneous. I believe maybe I don't think the spirit had a color. You don't think the spirit? I don't. I I, I don't really think a spirit had a color. So all spirit, the spirit. Where do you get the notion that the spirit world does not have color? It does. Okay, give me that in Daniel seven nine. Let me show you. Let me show you something. I got another one. I just gotta find it. As soon as I get it, I'm going to give it to you. You got it, Captain Isaac? Okay. Watch this. Oh, I got it right here. Revelation 4. I like this one better. Revelation 4, Revelation 4, verse 2 and 3. Revelation. Revelation, watch this. Chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. 3, three is the point, but read 2. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. So he's in the spirit world, right? He's in the spirit, right? Yeah. Go ahead. And one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sard sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. So he's in the spirit and he sees a rainbow, yeah. Yeah. meaning there's color in the spirit world. We have to forget this. all these thoughts we have as colonialism. They've miseducated us in the heavens, in the spirit world. There's color everywhere. That's so, why I had to find out one about the rainbow. It's yeah, there. Is, is, is that why I, I wouldn't want to call, I wouldn't want to put myself at, at a place where I think I'm whitewashed or brainwashed. Like, you know, 
everything black is a black spot and you know they were wrong. You know, everything white is you know then okay. But then then they're the same people that say, you know, uh, okay, the spirit has no colour. We are all heading to heaven and you know and we're all children of God. And so so when you come and tell me, okay, Christ is black and obviously his father could be black <laughs> if the, I mean is something that is going to I think it's going to take generations for people to really absorb. Oh it's gonna it's not so many generations, it's gonna be short because according to the prophecy, destruction's coming. Babylon the Great, which is America, is going to be annihilated. It's going to happen. So we have to learn this book and keep these commandments to make it to be saved. We must do that thing. You understand, well, Esther? Well, I get it. I really, really, really get it. So uh, you were really still expounding on, you know, us. That question that I really asked, how in a hell or heaven can we be the, the right people? Okay, uh, here's another one. Uh, give me Luke. 21 verse 24 what happened to the children of Israel okay watch this Luke chapter 21 verse 24 can you start above it yes sir verse 20 verse 20 verse 20 and when he shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies then know that the desolation thereof is nigh then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountain what is Christ telling the Israelites to do when Rome comes Run, leave the land. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein to. Saying, don't come back to this country. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. He's talking about 70 AD. Rome was coming to destroy the Israelites. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Some of us didn't listen. We stayed behind in Jerusalem, the Zealots, to fight Rome. It says we're going to fall by the sword. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And we were led away as slaves into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So Christ is saying a Gentile nation is living in the land. The real Israelites were scattered into captivity. But then, um, after the six, actually, this is something I got from John Hay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, he, he says, after the Sixth Day War, mm -hmm. uh, the so-called, I think, Jews, mm -hmm. uh, when, they, I mean, when they take over Jerusalem, mm -hmm. that was the end of the Gentiles. In Oh, really? Is that what that meant? John Hagee. <laughs> I don't know who's coming on. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's wrong. The six day law, law I mean, six day war. war is not even in the Bible there. What you got, Captain Isaac? Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. That's Esau, Edom which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. That goes right with Christ says. So the Gentile nation is talking about that would take the land is Esau, Edom. They have the land now. They have it. Oh, because, you know, I'm trying to connect the dots mm -hmm. with the end time, you know, there is a lot of end time prophecy. And, yeah. And, and you know, you know, then there comes, yeah, the, the word in, uh, is any a prophecy in Amos uh, that says, can a nation be created in one day? And then they refer that to the May 14th, 1948, the creation of the need of the Jewish state. I like that word. You say that creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they created that. That's them. That's not God. They created that. What's going on? Here's how you, another way you know that those are not the people. What happens when the Israelites get back to the land? Let's go to Isaiah 14. Here's the prophecy of when Israel goes back to the land of Israel. Watch what it's real Israel. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Who's going to set them in their own land? For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob no. and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Mm -hmm. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they, the nations. Okay. and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, 
and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants, for what? For servants mm -hmm. and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, mm. and they shall rule over their oppressors. Amen. I can't wait for that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really exhilarating. Mm. And I think I read in one of uh, articles on the website that, you know, the reason why I think sometimes you're not putting women, that, that, you know, the truth can just set you mad. You know, like, <laughs> he, 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 I mean, really, because all this is, I mean, where have we been all this while? You know, you, you really you really look at things and you're like, okay. Mm. Even though you have that cast of a shadow of doubt, but you're like, but then it's here. Yeah, it's there in the Bible. I was the same way. I, the Christianity was banging me in the head, but I, what I read in the Bible was different what we're being taught in church. Totally different. It's like they take one verse and then they'll preach on it for like an hour. That one verse. But when you read below or above it, it's like, no, that's not what it's talking about. That's what you come to realize. Oh my God! You see, um, you see, Bishop. I think um, I don't know how you. Though I tried to do a little bit of a background check, mm -hmm. and, 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 and a background check on you, and, and, you, and I realized you just. The, I think there is why it was you quoted in. I think one of them, and you said that when someone challenged you whether the blacks are being uh, put uh, are represented in the Bible, and you were like, it drove you mad. Mm -hmm. And you, that is when you took on the course, yes. you are, and I mean, just tell us about that. Well, we are an oppressed people from Uganda to America to the Caribbean island. And all doctrines, like you mentioned about ham earlier, you said yeah. that we come from ham. The, yeah, that is. That's, that's what Christian theology has taught us. And guess what? Ham was not cursed. The curse was his, on his son Canaan. When you read it, it says, curse be Canaan. Didn't tell you what the curse is. It says, a servant of servants shall he be. That was the curse. So it wasn't black skin like they teach in these uh, European churches, these theology schools. They teach, or they, they may have stopped teaching it recently, but they used to teach that the curse on hand was black skin. And that's not biblical. The curse on Canaan was to be a servant of servants. That's what the Bible says. They have misconstrued the entire, give me that 2 Corinthians chapter 2, the last verse, verse 17. These Christian religions out here are meant to pervert the gospel, and they have done an excellent job, but now their time is up. The word of God, the truth is coming out. Watch this, Esther. Captain Isaac. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. See that? We're not as many that corrupt the word of God. These church systems have corrupted the word of God. Do you realize the Vatican, they, they funded the slave trade. The Vatican did that thing with all the money of the Catholics gathered. They funded the slave uh, trade. I, 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 I want to ask you, we, we are probably running out of time, but... Um, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Of course I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches us about the Holy Spirit. King David prayed in Psalm 51. Said, take, is it Psalm 51? Where he says, take please Lord, take Spirit not thy Holy Spirit from me. Some people think the Holy Spirit just came in Acts 2. Oh, how wrong you are. The Holy Spirit has been with us from the beginning. Yeah, because there are people saying that, you know, that in the, in the Old Testament, the Spirit will just come upon you and get off. And then now in the, this new dispensation, he lives in us. <laughs> Give me your hate. Watch this. Get John 14, 15. Watch what Christ said. Watch what he said. This is so heavy. Most Christians think they have the Holy Spirit, right? But I'm going to show you how to get the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Come on. If, if ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. He's referring to the Holy Spirit. As you read down, he tells you the comforter is the Holy Spirit. But what is the stipulation to receive that comforter, that Holy Spirit? Read 15 again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. No Christian wants to do that. They don't want to keep the commandments. Oh, no. But this, this, <laughs> this is what I believe the commandments were. Mm -hmm. Because if you read that very text... Even in First John, 
uh, where it talks about commandments, it's the Greek word there is in tall and it is one. And I think that commandment is love your neighbor as yourself or love your God with all your heart, with all your soul. And yet, I think, give us that saying that maybe it's the Ten Commandments. Mm. So, and yet people say it's, it's a commandment of love. Yeah. There's more than that. There's more. The commandments, the love. Give me that, John. John, uh, I think we, uh, we yeah, ran out of time? Yeah, we are, we are running out of time. Oh, okay. But, but I really, really thank you so much. You're Bring really... us back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to forgive our website. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Brothers and sisters, you can follow us at Israel, www.israelunite.org. That's www.israelunite.org. Wow, wow, wow. Well, this has been a very, pretty much an interesting discussion here on the spotlight. I'd like to thank you. Very thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome, Appreciate Captain. It. Well, that has been the spotlight with me, Hester Munera. You'll always find all this information here on the spotlight where we cast light on what is the truth of the gospel. Having a myriad of topics, that is what the spotlight is. I would like to thank my producer, Harriet uh, Luiga. Uh, Joyce uh, and everyone behind the production, the management of Lighthouse Television, please be blessed and I would like to say bye-bye and have a nice weekend. Shalom. Shalom. Uh, you're coming here, there are many, many, many stations out there that wouldn't have opened doors for you as Christian stations. Mm. They would not open doors. Right. But there must be, yeah, the gospel that you have, if anybody disproves it, let him come on the floor and say what well, they say is not right. Right. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. If if uh, if we all believe in what we have been told for all the years we have lived, then there must be something different. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to them. Okay. Yeah. Used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day. Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.